Okay, nice growth TV. Yeah, we, uh, we, uh, we watch TV and then we talk about it behind your back. Okay, all right. Like total nice girls, so. So like that Trump, that girl, the woman who made the Trump statement, don't be a mean girl? I think he would hate me. Uh, no, I, I thought it was very funny that that woman said, don't be a mean girl. That was very cute. I'm not giving a political opinion. I just thought <laughs> yeah. it was that she called Trump a mean girl. Uh, oh, she called. It's all over the internet. Little things where he's, you know, that Mean Girls movie. Yeah. They superimposed his head over the Mean Girl in Mean Girls movie, and they did all these funny animations. And it was only I was I happened to be my wife recorded it. And it was like one o'clock in the morning, and I watched it on whatever channel they were on. And I said, she called him a mean girl. I thought that was hilarious. And so the next day in the office, I was saying, she called him a mean girl. And everybody said, yeah, it's all over the web. Just pit. Trump Mean Girl, and you'll see the most hilarious. Have you seen them? Yeah, well, a lot of the, if you think about the, a lot of the insults in the slam book in Mean Girls is the sort of way he talks about women. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? It's, it's, it's quite remarkable, yeah. So oh, yeah. that's always a public slut or whatever, yeah. right? Like, that's yeah, 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 exactly. Right. The slam book. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, no, it, it matches up. It's, it's alarming. No, and I'm writing a horror movie right now in a sorority. Oh, gosh. You know, and I've been using a lot of those references about what sorority girls do to a girl they don't let into the sorority and how they talk about it and how to treat her and I've been watching all these low budget horror movies where you know the university kids all get killed you know but uh, I have a writer who uh, asked me to write this horror movie with her and she's we're having so much fun and she's giving me all the mean girl lines <laughs> I think if I were if I were in a horror movie, it would take place in a sorority. Yes, I think. Yeah, yeah. As a member of the Canadian media, though, a lot of Canadian art is. Uh, there was an article in the New York Times recently about Canadian comedy and the way that it's sort of free to comment on America and what's happening there, uh, with a slightly a slightly bit more freedom and a bit of a different perspective. Do you find creating a piece of Canadian art that then goes out to the Americans? Do you have that sort of freedom to maybe make a bit of a commentary? You might not if you're working in American. Um, I don't know if I, I if I deal with it to be honest because I'm, I'm not worried about the American market to be honest. They are our fan base on this show, Lost Girl and Last Show, okay, as well. We have a, such a huge international following of the show, much I think much bigger than we do in the states, right? And I spend a lot of time in Europe because I produce with I produce with Luc Besson's company. I produce with German, and French, I, and I, in fact. Two weeks from now, I'm doing a European tour with a whole bunch of French, German, and British producers to work more in Europe. But their view of the U.S. serves me better than the Canadian view of the U.S. and better than the U.S. view of the U.S. Because they all just find it a joke. And they all just find it funny. Uh, so, you know, I, I, I want them to watch the show just as much as I do Americans. So I actually have to sort of avoid it. Right? So that's my business mind saying let's not do anything creatively that doesn't work worldwide. They were telling me that I, I get that you the, the writers like the specific character type questions, and I came with a lot of those. Oh yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> All right, she's a super fan. Yeah, super okay. fan, yes. Um, so two arc this season is kind of being a hero even when it's hopeless and when it doesn't make a difference. Like, how did that come to be about? And well, will we the, see more the first episode of the way back, you know, when she was oxygen deprived, I had the writers put in a little thing about how it's harder to be good than bad, right? Yeah because I wanted her on that journey. It's a lot more work to save people and to have a conscience than it is not to. So she's dealing with the fact that, wait a minute, these people are relying on me. I've taken on this commander role. She initially took the commander role. You'll, I, I don't know if you've seen this backstory yet. I'm trying to remember. Which episode it's in. But, all right, but I'll tell you a bit about it. If it hasn't shown up already, I don't remember. I have the episode, guys, but I can't remember what you've seen and not seen. I'm bad at this, because I'm working on season four. We've seen 307. Yeah, but have you seen... Okay, I can't do this. It might be in episode eight. I'm not sure. Okay, but you, you find that she took control as the leader before the mind wipe. It's not just after the mind wipe. 
And when she took control, she wasn't a good person. And she wasn't worried about her crew. All right? She wasn't trying to save the world. So she was a commander for a different reason. So she has that conflict because the real two, or the Portia, are, was a bad person who would screw everyone and kill everyone and not care. Not care. Right? So she's got the biggest conflict of anybody on the show. I mean, we've taken Rio's backstory, and we were talking about it at a couple of tables, where he's a real bad guy, you think. But he's not a bad guy. He's a guy who thinks he's doing the right thing for his people. Right? Even though he's making a lot of mistakes and screwing up and, you know, not being nice, his motivation is to do the right thing for his dynasty or whatever we call it, I can't remember. Right? Two, is it sure? She doesn't know if right, she doesn't know what's right and what's wrong. She's debating it, but she's taking on this heavy responsibility on her shoulders and she's trying to deal with that. Right? So she's saying, she's going to come to this thing. I can take care of my people, I can't take care of everybody. Right? Come on. Yeah, so the actors here know almost less about their characters than pretty much any other actors in TV, and most actors don't. No, know we don't tell them a lot about where they're going. How much do you know about? Oh, I know. You know absolutely everything. Oh, I design their future. So you 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 thought ahead. You know the end. I know what we're doing with everybody in season four. But do you know beyond? I know what I want to do. No, no, no. But we ad lib a lot. You saw. Um, uh, we were just talking about Sarah's character. Okay? Sarah died in the first season. I cut that out because the actress is great. She's great. So I said, let's bring her back. Find a way, guys. And they called me up. They said, we're uploading her to the computer. I said, great. Great. She's alive. <laughs> you know? And then we sat there and said, okay, now what do we do with her? So that has evolved. But you'll love the art for her that we developed. It's so fun. It's like, I talked to Sarah. I said, I'm going to write something for you if you like this. She went, she was all excited. So that evolved, OK? Uh, four, his storyline was originally planned for season four. Not season three. But when I killed one, which none of the writers like, <laughs> that was me. I get blamed for that. I sort of threw a wrench into the long-term arc of all the characters. Because he was a conscience, he was a nice guy, he was a bit of a potential romantic interest for two, right? There was a conflict between him and three. So I, I, I killed his character because I don't want everyone comfortable that they're always going to live and they're always going to survive and they're always going to get off the planet and they're always going to back the ship and everybody's going to live happily ever after. I can't have you believe that. So I still may play with this. You're gonna see some. I'm gonna have to stun you once more, maybe. You know, but I can't have everybody believe they're always gonna live. So we did that on one, which sort of set a bunch of chain reaction. So we brought four storyline up, but a lot of people love four and don't like Rio. And we're being told we want four back. We don't want Rio. So we're dealing with that. But that wasn't planned because. The reaction, you know, Leo's original story was it's just going to turn bad and screw up and maybe get killed, maybe not get killed, we don't know. But people are actually commenting regularly, and I encourage everyone to give us opinions of where they want the show to go on every social media website they can, and let Sci Fi Channel know as well. Uh, they loved Alex's four, and he wasn't the most lovable character we thought, because he's so cool, right? But they like them, and they want four back, they don't want real. So we're reacting to that, too. So do you take fan, fan uh, opinion into yeah, in fact, story future? You know what? It's funny. We're doing the panel tonight, and I don't know. I'm playing with the idea of asking what people like and don't like. I don't. I know that could be incredibly dangerous. <laughs> yeah, but I can, I can give a few things. So. Yeah. No, but if you're there at the thing tonight, oh, definitely. I, I, I'm debating, because I try not to do that. But even just now, I'm finding out that, you know, the input's a good thing. Five, five with the big gun again is always great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, five storyline, again, um, there was an episode where, and it, it didn't work the way I wanted to. There was an episode where I had five get smashed against the wall, right? There was, we did it, you know, when they went to retrieve the blank drive, right? That was in season two. And we were protecting her. 
So I called the writers, I said, no, I want her hurt. I want her knocked over, bowled over, hurt. Because I want her to recognize that there's jeopardy on the Raza for her. She's not this protected little girl anymore. And uh, when we introduced Adrian into the show, right, um, I think we've already done the storyline, right? Is he still on the show? Yeah. He, he took off two episodes ago. He took off at the He's end gone of now, right? six. Okay. I put in this little conversation where he says to her, you don't need to be on this dangerous ship, right? And she says, this is it. I've, I've been working her storyline with the, right, the writers. I, I have to give, say the writers, but I work with them. To make sure Five sees this as a place where she belongs. She's been striving to be one of the crew, right? But she's a kid. So when I give her a good gun and have her blow people away, it's to make her valuable to the crew, right? And not just uh, when when they went back to retrieve the safety deposit box or whatever, you know, he said, hey, you've been in this situation before, how do we get out of it, right? Right? And she's going like, ah, your ideas are stupid, right? Because she's now an experienced bad guy. Are there plans to bring Mishka back? Um, debating it. You know, I'm waiting to hear how people react to him. A lot of people didn't like him at the beginning and then liked him later. Next, okay? What's his, their handler before? I don't think anybody really cared about uh, uh, what's his name that he replaced. Tabor was it? T Tabor. I mean, did you guys like Tabor? I thought he was funny. He was always in his bathrobe. And yeah. He just seemed very irreverent, and then you'd have the crew who are life and death facing, and this guy would just be surrounded by rich stuff. So yeah. He was funny, but not. Too yeah. No, the storyline for Mishka was to be. I'm trying to be Tabor. And then we put that little speech in with uh, Five saying, okay, stop trying so hard, right? And I want, I'm waiting to see how people react to the character before we decide what to do with him, right? Because, I don't know, did you grow to love him? Did you want him there all the time? Or did you want him to just be Tabor and give him an assignment every now and then? He can easily come back and forth. That character could easily just call and say, hey, I got a job for you. I think a lot of us agreed with the crew where they're like, okay, you can go, but Solara can stay. Yeah, yeah. So I, I saw a lot of love for her. Right yeah, and Solara surprisingly had a bigger impact than we expected as well, right? I like the actress. She was really motivated and fun. But people really liked her. Like, we're being asked, please, I hope she's coming back. You know, so and we've been discussing it like this. We didn't have a storyline for her. Again, we talked about everything being protected. There was no storyline for Salah, right? But when we brought Mishkin and we wanted this quiet, little, awkward guy, so we gave him a bodyguard, right? And when I was in the casting session for the bodyguard, you know, we were seriously just going for somebody who could beat everybody up and be a like, huge person or something. And we weren't going for necessarily acting chops, we were going for appearance and power. And, and she did such a great job that, you know, it was fantastic what she did with the party. And you know, each actor brings a uh, element to the party and we exploit that. I don't believe that we would ever have given uh, Jodell's uh, Five's storyline what we're giving it without Jodell's ability. Jodell brought more to that character than we ever expected, which is why we've been expanding it. So I, I give the actors a lot of credit. When they deliver something that wasn't expected, the character we wrote, then we can expand it. Thank you very much. Yeah, I think they're, 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 they're giving us the wrap-up. Okay. Thank you so much. All right, hope that helps. Awesome.